A story exists that has haunted an area of Edinburgh for many years. Something so terrifying that few of the residents dare to mention it. In the 1930s, Sir Alexander Seaton and his wife Zela returned home here to Lermont Gardens, an affluent part of Edinburgh's new town after a tour of Egypt. It was then that strange things started to happen. Whilst visiting a newly discovered tomb, Lady Seaton kept a bone from the mummified remains. The macabre memento was then placed on display in the family property. Strange events soon followed. Paintings would fall off walls, everyday items would disappear, and as the weeks passed, these events would become more frequent and violent. Mirrors would crack, knives and forks would fly across the room, and plates would smash. Eventually, a shrouded figure appeared. So terrifying was this, that several staff members left. In order to gain greater insight to the story of Lermont Gardens, I decided to contact a specialist on this subject. I'm here with Professor Izzy Baylock, an Egyptologist who works at the Museum of Scotland. Izzy, you've covered this case for quite a long time. Is there any further insight that you could give us? It's interesting to note that the Lermont Gardens story spread not only across the UK, but internationally. Two American journalists visited Lord Seaton's property and uh, during the course of the interview, touched the artefact. The very next day, one of the journalists was involved in a serious car crash. The other journalist, not long after, felt very ill and died. Wow, really? Egyptian curses have been well documented throughout the decades, and with events escalating out of control, Lord Seaton desperately sought out help to defeat the menace that had invaded his home. Eventually, when all else failed, he turned to the Catholic Church. One of the most intriguing aspects of the story is that Sir Alexander was contacted by Howard Carter, the man who discovered King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. Howard Carter expressed his belief that the happenings in Edinburgh were genuine. He also advised that he had witnessed similar events in both the UK and Egypt. And it was quite possible for the paranormal activity to be caused by the presence of ancient relics. So it would seem that Sir Alexander and his wife were not alone in being victims of a real Egyptian curse. Yes, that's quite right. However, that isn't the end of the story. I've been contacted by residents and visitors to the property who say they've had very strange experiences over the years, and I'm lucky to have one of them with me now. Hi, Mike. Hi. You're a Reiki instructor visiting a client in Lermont Gardens, so can you tell me what happened that day to make it unusual? Well, I was uh, visiting a client at the, at the, at the property we discussed. Um, I was in a Reiki session, and about halfway through the session, the client was a, got a bit unsettled. Uh, so, this is not uncommon, they got up and went through to their room to get a glass of water mm -hmm. and to cover themselves and as I turned round um, in the corner of the room, which I hadn't noticed before, was the, what I can describe as a, as a, a shrouded figure. Um, it kind of took me quite by surprise, I actually got a bit of a fright with it. Um, I looked away, looked back again and it was still there. Um, again, felt very unsettled, very uh, frightened by this. I tried to get the attention of my client, um, I couldn't at the time, I just felt almost quite weak and quite stumbly and I couldn't really move or speak. Um, this was, I mean it felt like a long time but it was probably you know, a minute at the most. Mm -hmm. I've come back around again to see the client, uh, to see the, the sh this figure and it was gone. Um, eventually I started to feel okay, settled. I eventually when the client spoke with them about this, um, they seemed unsurprised by it. So uh, they had they'd seen this before? They had heard yeah, of it? Or? I did. I, mean, I felt like stupid saying it to them, but I did say, well, this is what I've seen. And so they weren't surprised? Once I say, oh, the, yeah, this, this has happened before. And when uh, was this? Uh, this was 
around about probably about five years ago in the summertime. So that's um, obviously a long time after the house was exercised in the 1930s. Definitely after the 1930s, definitely, yeah. So Mike, this thing you've seen in the corner, just describe it to me, would you say it was a figure, was it a shape, what was it? It was definitely a figure, um, uh, fairly tall, um, I couldn't quite make out his face because it appeared to have like a shroud or a veil across his face and through most of his body, mm -hmm. but you could make out that it was a figure, yes definitely. Um, yes, it was... Uh, it appeared to be looking towards me, but it didn't appear to be moving or making any motions towards me at all. It just, it, it seemed like it was just stood there staring at me. Um, and like I say, it felt, made me feel very unsettled, um, almost paralysed with it. After Mike's revelations, it would appear that the house still experiences paranormal activity. What is the malevolent shrouded figure that still haunts? They want gardens. So did it speak to you or try to engage with you in any way? Uh, no, um, I could, I could, like I said earlier, I could make out its face, uh, but it didn't appear to be making any any movements towards me or or try to speak to me. Um, I could make it. A, a mouth shape, but nothing seemed to be moving there. So this face, would you say, had features like a man, like a woman, or...? Um, hard to tell. I mean, it, like, it, I think if there wasn't a, such a shroud across it, I would maybe have made it out, but it was really hard to see. But you um, would definitely say it was a face? Oh, it was definitely a face. Definitely a, a, a figure, a, a human figure, yeah. So, Mike, would you ever consider returning to the house? Um, no, I, d I don't think I would. Um, I think what happened there was too much. I, I still see the client, um, um, but they actually come to me now. I'm going to go to their house instead. I feel I feel it's better for me. Do you ever mention the situation with the client, or is that uh, just... No, I, I, I tend not to. We just I try to like to forget it happened, to be fair. I recently talked to the current occupier, who didn't want to appear on camera, and asked what he thought of the curse of Lemon Gardens. His reply was, and I quote, daft things happen in this place all the time. I wonder if Lord and Lady Seaton would agree. <laughs>